A lot of business gurus out there like to talk about hustle and grind and working 80 hour weeks and no days off. But for me, when I was starting my business, that's not what I wanted at all. I wanted a business that was going to give me a great life, not a business that was going to force me to work every waking hour of my life and not have any freedom. So I wanted a business that was going to let me have a great life where I didn't have to work a lot, where I didn't have a whole bunch of complexity, like a whole bunch of employees, um, office buildings, inventory, all those things that add complexity. I wanted to reduce that as much as possible because what I wanted was to, on one hand, to make a high income, but on the other hand, to have a great lifestyle too, to be actually able to enjoy the income that I was bringing in instead of you know buying stuff that I would never be able to use because I was working all the time. Basically, I wanted freedom. I wanted the freedom to live where I wanted to live. Specifically, at the time I was living in the city, I wanted to move out of the city and move out into the country. I wanted the freedom to travel, to be able to go where I want, when I want, to be able to experience cool things and not be tied to a desk or not be tied to working and, and not be kind of, you know, traveling to some really cool location on the other side of the world and then be on my computer for 16 hours a day and not never get to enjoy it. I wanted the freedom to try other things, right? I wanted to have a solid income coming in where I was working few hours so that if I wanted to try something else, if I wanted to try a new business, if I wanted to uh, try doing a podcast or starting a new YouTube channel or starting a charity or that kind of thing, that I had the freedom to be able to do that kind of thing. And then finally, I wanted the freedom to buy the things I want. I wanted financial freedom, right? That's the whole reason to have a high income in my opinion. I mean, there's some people out there that want to have a high income to compete just to keep up with the other people and say, look how great I am. But for me, it was all about, I just want to be able to do the things that I want to do without having to worry about the price. Now, the way I see it, there are basically three goals that people have for their businesses. You know, different people get into business for different reasons, but I, I kind of bucket them into these three goals. Number one is lifestyle. Number two is impact. Number three is conquer the world. So for lifestyle, that's that's what I'm talking about here. Lifestyle is all about I want to be able to live the life that I want to live. You know, I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to buy nice things. I want to be able to enjoy my time with my family and my loved ones and have a great time. Right. That's what lifestyle is all about. Some people start a business for the lifestyle. Some people start a business for the impact. Right. They want to make a positive change in the world. They want to do something big and wonderful for the world and so their their main focus is impact and then finally number three is conquer the world there's some people that uh, start a business out of pure competition they want to be the biggest they want to be the best they want to be the richest they want to have the most control the most influence so you really want to know which of these three is important to you which of these is going to be your goal and it can't be more than one right or it could be all three so you want to know which of these is important to you before you go and start a business because that's going to dictate everything about your business, including the business model that you choose to follow, um, including the one person business model that I'm about to talk about in this video. So just to help you cement this a little bit better, I'll give you an example of each. So lifestyle business is like the four hour work week. If you've ever read that book, that's what it's all about. It's being able to work four hours a week and then have that extra time to do whatever you want, um, to learn new skills, to go travel, to, to go, to whatever you want, right? That's the lifestyle business. Impact business is like Tony Robbins, right? Tony Robbins is all about making as big an impact as possible. He's already got all the money. He has the lifestyle, but he continues working like crazy because he wants to make the biggest possible impact. And then finally, conquer the world businesses. These are people like Bill Gates, like Elon Musk, like um, Jeff Bezos that just want to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and have more and more control until um, eventually they have like a worldwide monopoly, which actually kind of explains why you see some of these conquer the world people are, are really intent into getting into politics and they, they give like billions of dollars to nonprofit charity organizations that are lobbying governments and, and trying to control the world because they've already got all the money that they could possibly ever want. And so now they have to go move on to a bigger thing, right? Like the next step in their, their world conquest. So for me, in this one person business model that I'm going to show you, it was really all about lifestyle, right? That's what got me into it. Nowadays, it's kind of evolved a little bit more into number two. I'm, I'm more interested in impact now, but when it started, it was all about lifestyle. In this business model, the one person business model, you can have a great lifestyle and make a great impact 
at the same time. Now, you cannot do number three, right? This, this will not work if your goal is to conquer the world. If that is your goal, then um, you might as well skip this video because this is not going to be the way that you want to go. So how do you create this kind of business? Well, there are five principles that you need to operate by, right? And again, you want to figure out, um, you, you want to get a clear idea of what the goal is before you start on the business. And if you've already started a business, you can always modify it back to this, but it's easier if you start with the end in mind and you build the business around your goals, because really your business should support your life, not your life supporting your business. Again, unless you're obsessed with conquering the world, then maybe it's different. But anyway, so there are five basic principles here, and I'm going to go over each one of these. So number one is automation rather than time. I'll say automation is better than time. So almost anything that you can, you can do yourself repetitively, well, almost any business is going to require some sort of repetitive action. Like you have to communicate the same message over and over and over and over again. You have to deliver the same product over and over and over again, et cetera. And so if you can get rid of your time, right, instead of doing it yourself over and over again, find some way to use automation instead, that's going to be a much more efficient business that you can run with little of your time and a lot of automation, which costs you nothing or, or close to nothing. So how does that work? Well, there are a few good examples. Number one that I really like to use is video, right? Video is me speaking a message, but not having to do it repeatedly. I speak the message once, I record it on a video, and then people can watch that message over and over and over again an unlimited number of times. So think about this video right here. It's taking me probably about an hour, everything included, to create this video. However, people can watch this a hundred times or a thousand times or a million times, and every single extra view doesn't cost me any time at all. So my message is increasing and increasing and increasing without any additional time on my part. Another example of automation is software. If you have a service that you can provide for somebody that you can get a computer to do the service instead of you doing the service, well, that's very valuable. If you think about a spreadsheet, for example, where you have a bunch of calculations in the spreadsheet, well, you could take all of those numbers in the spreadsheet and manually go in and put, put in a calculator and come up with a calculation for each one of those. But if you have the spreadsheet, just do it for you automatically. Well, you're taking a whole bunch of your time and replacing it with automation. And pretty much every computer program is created to do that. And notice also that automation can take the place of employees. Generally, you know, traditionally, when people wanted help with some work, when they wanted to stop using their time and uh, get it done without doing it themselves, they would hire other people to do it for them. Well, that's great. That's an improvement. However, automation is better because employees come with complexity, right? When you hire an employee, first of all, you have to train them uh, about what to do. And then they're human. They're probably going to make mistakes then there's all the, you know, all the legal regulations and stuff. You got to pay them quite a lot for them to be able be willing to work for you. Um, and you have to worry about being sued. You have to worry about like if they're if they're not very good and you fire them, are they going to sue you for wrongful wrongful termination or for discrimination or something like that? So there's all this complexity that goes with having employees. And then you got to have meetings with them, et cetera, et cetera. So if you can have automation instead of employees, that's really, really good. Uh, another good example of this is emails, right? You can get systems that will send out emails for you automatically. I use this all the time. If I was to hire employees to send out those emails, well, that would be a lot of added complexity, a lot of added money that I don't have to spend um, because I have automation instead. So that's principle number one, automation. Uh, principle number two is communicate one to many. Communicate one to many. So whenever you are, let's say you're delivering a sales message to somebody, 
And if you are, you can deliver the same message one to one, or you can deliver the message one to many. So let's say, for example, that you're giving a sales message to somebody, you're giving somebody a sales pitch. Um, take the example of somebody who is a door to door salesman and you knock on the person's door and you say, hey, uh, I have these great vacuum cleaners for sale and you give your whole pitch and then the person buys or they doesn't they don't buy. And then you go to the next door down and you knock on their door and you give them the same pitch that you just gave over again. And you spend the whole day doing that. And like by the end of the day, maybe you've given 30 pitches. Well, what if instead of giving 30 individual pitches, you could give one pitch just one time and get all of those 30 people in the neighborhood together and pitch them all at the same time, right? That would be a much more effective use of your time. So whenever you are delivering a message live, you want to find a way to communicate one to many. Now, you can obviously you can record videos as we were talking about before with automation. But if you have to talk to somebody live, it's better to talk to multiple people at the same time so you don't have to give the same pitch over and over and over again. That's true with sales. It's true with marketing. It's also true with product fulfillment or delivery. Like if you have a coaching program, you do coaching for people. It's much more efficient if you can get multiple people on the same coaching call rather than have a coaching call for each person. And it actually it works a lot better for the people too, from what I've found normally, because if you schedule, let's say you have an hour coaching session with 10 people, um, they're, they're, they're all on the same time. Rather than having an hour a piece with each one, that's, that would be 10 times the amount of work. And what you'll find is that people don't really have an hour's worth of stuff to talk about with you. And so what ends up being is just kind of filler and, and non-impactful stuff that you're talking about. And also, when you're on the group coaching call, you find that a lot of people, if they're you know assuming that they're all doing the same thing, they're going for the same goal, they're going to run into the same roadblocks. They're going to have the same questions. And so it's a lot more efficient and a lot of people will attend a group coaching call and they will learn things that they would not have learned if it had just been a one on one call. Right. Because other people will ask questions that they had not thought to ask. And there will be other people that are a little bit further in the process that are running into a roadblock. And the person that's that's not as far in the process will hear about that roadblock and they they will know how to get over it once they get to it themselves. Right. So it makes the process more efficient for your clients, for your coaching students, as well as for yourself. So whenever you possibly can replace one to one communications with one to many. OK, now, principle number three is keep it purely online. Right. This is the ability that the things that we have available to our to us now are just absolutely unprecedented because of the Internet, which is why it's now possible to have a one person business to have a lifestyle business that makes multiple six figures a year, right? Because we can put stuff purely online, right? And online facilitates these other things, right? Automation online. You can communicate one to many online through lives, through webinars, through Zoom. So we want our product to be purely digital, right? We want our product to be online because if you have uh, an ebook or you have a course, if you have a coaching program, if you can keep it purely online, well, now you don't have to worry about inventory. You don't have to have a storefront. You don't have to go travel. You don't have to go drive to an office building every day. You don't have to go drive to a store or an office building every day. Like it saves so much of your time and gives you so much more freedom if you can keep it all online. And this applies to your sales process, but also your product, right? So you want your sales process to be online. If you're selling through videos and webinars and that kind of thing, it's all online, as opposed to if you're going and giving physical seminars or e even worse, you know, you're knocking door to door. Well, now you don't have any location freedom right now. You have to be at the place where your prospects are or you have to be at the location of the seminar. Whereas if you're doing webinars, if you're if you're just recording videos, you just pack up your camera and go wherever you want, um, you know, as long as there's an Internet connection. So that's the and that's the sales process side. And then the delivery process is the same thing, right? If you deliver purely online, then 
you don't have to be at the store, you don't have to be at the restaurant, you don't have to be at the office, right? You can be wherever you want. You get that freedom and you don't have to drive back and forth, which saves a whole bunch of your time as well. So that's principle number three. Now, principle number four is charge a high price. Charge a well, relatively high price. And, and the reason for this is because the more products you have to deliver, the more that you are adding complexity, right? Every sale that you have requires work on your part. It requires complexity. And so if you can, if you can raise your price, you can make the same amount of money with a, a smaller number of sales. So for example, let's say that you sell a, a product for $1,000 and you like to make $10,000 a month. Well, now you only have to sell 10 products a month, right, at $1,000. Whereas if you have a $10 product, now you have to sell 1,000 of them a month. So which one do you think is more complexity? Which do you think is more work in delivering? You know, 10 products or 1,000 products? Obviously, the 1,000 products. And this is true, by the way, even if you followed number three, and your products are purely online or purely digital because there is no frictionless product, right? You know, people talk about, um, about passive income. The truth is completely passive income doesn't really exist in most cases. And so even if you have an online product, there are gonna be people that, that email you that say, oh, I can't access it. My password doesn't work. Um, the, the workbook in module three isn't working. You know, you're going to get that, like no matter how how online, how purely digital your product is. So, you know, if you have, let's say, 10 percent of the people that, that buy your product have issues like that. Well, if you sold 10 products, well, you, now you have one person emailing you with issues. If you sold a thousand products, now you have 100 people that are that are emailing you with issues. So if you sell higher price products, it's a lot less work. So that's principle number four. And then finally, principle number five is focus. Focus. This is as much a message to myself as to anybody else, especially right now, because I've uh, taken on a few too many projects and I'm sort of starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed. But you've got to, you, you got to recognize the fact that there are many, many ways that you can make a lot of money um, and have a lot of impact and really like a lot of great business opportunities out there. You know, if you just watch YouTube, like you watch the ads on YouTube, you see like a thousand business opportunities in the ads. And guess what? Most of them work. You know, most of them are legitimate business opportunities and they will work. However, you are only one person. If you want to have a one person business model and not have a, like an army of employees working for you, you only have so many, much time in the day. And if you want to have a lifestyle business where you're not working like crazy and working yourself to death, then you got to limit it to a certain number of opportunities. The best number being one. You choose one opportunity and you pursue that and you don't let yourself get distracted. And this is difficult, especially as you get more and more successful, because what you find is when you start getting some success, then the opportunities, the temptations to divert your focus just get more and more and more because as well, for one thing, people start throwing opportunities at you, right? People say, oh, come on my podcast, do this affiliate deal with me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like you get all these opportunities because they see that you're starting to become successful and they realize that you could help them. And there, you know, these opportunities that come at you, again, may be legitimate opportunities, which actually is kind of the problem because the better you get at business, the better you get at doing this kind of stuff, the more successful you get, the smarter you get, the more you realize that whatever opportunity presents itself to you, you're like, oh, that could work, right? Like, I know how I would do that. And your mind starts running and you, you come up with a business plan for how exactly you would create this new business that's completely unrelated to your current business. And you get all excited about it. And then you say yes to the opportunity that the person emailed you about. And so now you've got all of this extra work on your plate that you may have underestimated. Um, and now you have essentially you have two businesses. You've just doubled your workload. And if you do that enough times, then all of a sudden you're working 16 hour days. You're doing the hustle and grind thing. And the lifestyle business that you wanted to have is going out the window 
because you have all this work that you have to do. So you just have to be willing to say no to opportunities because they will totally overwhelm you. Stay focused, stay focused on the, the one thing that you are doing that has the highest impact that is going to give you the lifestyle that you want, the impact you want, whatever it is that you are going for in your business. Focus on the thing that is going to get you there the fastest and going to reach those goals the most efficiently. And again, this is totally a message to myself. If you want, if you want an example of what not to do, look at, at what I've been doing lately. So I, I really got to cut down on the things that I'm pursuing, choose the ones that are the highest impact and go for those only. And you might be in the same situation where you've already committed yourself to a whole bunch of different things at the same time. Figure out which ones are the highest impact, which ones are going to move the needle the most to getting you to your goals, whatever those goals may be, and then cut out everything else. Let yourself focus, don't be distracted. So that's principle number five, focus. And then if you would like a specific business model that takes into account all of these that can get you to multiple six figures a year, I've seen people get to over a million dollars a year purely by themselves, a one person business model, check out this video all about how you can earn a doctor's salary working part-time hours from home.